Hello everybody and uh, welcome back. So in this video now we're going to be looking at how to use Microsoft Excel to do a multiple regression and you will see if you watched the previous video on how to do a simple linear regression in Excel this is almost exactly the same. So we might go a little bit quickly but you know I'll go through a few iterations of, uh, through variations of, um, of multiple regression here. So as you probably know from class, when we're looking at a multiple regression, uh, specifically this is a multiple linear regression, now what we're working with is a model that has one dependent variable, and now we can have as many independent variables as we see fit. So once again, I am not getting into a discussion of the theory, the application, the context or interpretation of this type of model. I've got another batch of videos that correspond to my statistics workbook too. Here would, we would be in module uh, 15 of that workbook. In this uh, series of videos, I am just focusing on how to get the results that you need from Excel. So what we need from Excel is to be able to obtain those estimates of those coefficients in our regression model. So we're going to be looking at how to get the estimated regression model, which has the general notation would look something like this. Okay, so let's just jump into it. Now, I've set up a, a, a data set here in Excel that contains a few different variables. And depending on where you are in the course at this point, when you're watching this video, you may not yet have talked about these variables yet, or this type of variable. This is what is called a dummy variable or a categorical variable. And I'll talk about those in just one second. So let's just go through step by step how to do regressions. So what you would have seen if you watched the previous video was a simple linear regression where we had one dependent variable y and one independent variable x. So let's just assume for now that that's all we have. We've got one dependent, one independent. So what we did in that previous video is we looked at uh, some scatter plots. Here I can insert a scatter plot the same way as we did before. And you can, you know, make some comments. What do you see? What do you not see? Is it positive, negative? Does it look like there's any relationship at all? Right? These scatter plots are, are an important part of the summary portion of your assignment or your report when you're trying to get a preliminary idea of what does that relationship look like, if any at all. So you can do that the same way here, if I've got um, one variable, or if I have multiple variables. When I have multiple variables, when I'm highlighting those, again, remember Excel takes whichever column is on the right hand side, and it's going to put that on your y axis, whatever is on the left hand side, um, that will go on the x axis. And so here it's already set up, I've got my dependent variable here, that's what I want to have on the y axis. So if I wanted to produce a scatter plot of these two, well, now because those columns are separated, I need to hold down on my iMac, the command key, if you're using a Windows, you would hold down the control key so that I can highlight those two columns that are separated. And I can insert here that scatter plot in very much the same way. And once more, I can comment on what kind of relationship do I see, if any. Okay, positive, negative. This one looks pretty negative to me. Okay, so we've got that done. If you're working with categorical variables, dummy variables, there's not a lot of value in producing scatter plots for categoricals. Um, and you'll see why here in, in just one second. <clears throat> they look strange. Because as you will see, if uh, when you get to studying categoricals, they're only zeros and ones. And so your scatter plots look a little bit odd here. Um, what you might be more interested in doing if you're working with categorical variables 
is talking about um, the proportion of your sample that exists as one caddy category or another category. So here I have as my categories just some colors. I've got purple. Purple is what we would call that base case. I've got red and I've got blue. So categoricals, as you may know, allow us to bring non-numerical data into our regression model. I might be interested in what is the proportion of my sample that is blue? What is the proportion of my sample that is red? And that's fairly easy to obtain because if I just select um, those values, that column, well, if I look right down here, it says I've got an average of 0.3437. Well, remember what that average is. It's adding up all of the values and dividing it by the total number of values. Well, here, my values are either ones or zeros. So when it adds those up and divides by the total, this right here, it's called an average, but in this case, it's actually my proportion. So this is saying that about 34% of my sample uh, corresponds with that blue category, whatever the category is. Again, I'm not, I'm not bringing in any context into this discussion. We're just looking at how to get the results that we might want. Uh, similarly, you know, my category red, my category red makes up about 31% uh, of my sample. Okay, so that's, you know, about what we might want to do with the categoricals, depending on the context of your problem, you might want to see well, what is the average value of my dependent variable for the red. Uh, if that's the case, you might be inclined to reorganize the data and you have to be very careful when you do this. You don't want to misalign your data points. So if I wanted to look at some summary statistics by each category, well then I'll want to come in and sort this. So I'm in data uh, and I'm sorting. Uh, and here I might want to sort by column Y, no, not column Y. Let's say we want to sort by red, um, smallest to largest, that's fine, okay. Make sure I've highlighted the full data set because when I sort this, I don't want to lose my row um, assignments. I want to make sure that everything stays intact. So I highlight this and I sort it now by red. So now you can see I've got all of the red observations sorted together. I might also want to sort by blue. And so now I've sorted that data set um, for each of my categoricals, each of my categories. Now again, if you haven't talked about categorical variables yet uh, in your course, you're just doing an assignment on, on a multiple regression, fast forward this section. Come back to it later when you need to um, review categorical information. So now I've got my data sorted into my three categories. There's my purple, there's my red, there's my blue. So now I can in fact get descriptive statistics for each of my three categories. What is the average value of Y, X1, X2 for the purples? What is the average value uh, of Y, X1, X2 for the reds? And so on and so forth, okay? Now, reorganizing the data, as long as I've done it properly and I highlighted my whole data set so I didn't mess up those horizontal um, uh, arrangements, it has no impact on my regression analysis, okay? But if, if you did something that you know, I'm nervous to do it because I don't want to mess up my data set. If I only selected one column and I say sort, it even brings up a warning. Outside of the collection, uh, the selection won't be sorted. So what that means is it's double checking. Do you want to only sort that column or do you want to expand the selection so that it sorts everything by that column? Okay, so be careful. Okay, let's go into um, regression analysis. So what you would have seen for the simple linear regression, let's just clean up this stuff from before. So a simple linear regression, you selected as your dependent variable y that one column. For a simple linear regression, I only had one independent variable, so I would have selected that one 
independent variable. I selected labels. I've talked about this and I think every one of the videos, make sure you select the labels and tick this box to tell Excel that you've selected the labels. Output range, tell it uh, where you want the output to go. And generally speaking, you'll want those standardized residuals. Okay, so we'll click on that box as well. If your assignment or your, your problem doesn't ask for a residual analysis, then you don't need it, but there's no harm in getting it anyways. It's no extra work on your behalf. Click the box and get those standardized residuals. And so there's the simple linear regression. Okay, so this is what you would have done in the previous, um, previous video. Now, I only did that here to show you how similar it is to do a multiple regression. Because now for the multiple regression, well, my dependent variable is Y. I select that dependent variable. For a multiple regression, well, now I don't just have X1. So I'm not only going to select X1, I'm also going to include, let's say, X2. So let's ignore those categorical variables just for now. So here we're assuming that I've got a model. Let's go like this just to avoid any confusion. Let's assume that this is it. This is my model. I've got one dependent variable and I have two independent variables, right? So I'm highlighting my data the same way that I did for that simple linear regression. There's my dependent for my independent. I'm not just going to highlight the one, I'm going to highlight both. Or if you have three or four or five or 10 independent variables, you just select all of them at once, including, of course, the labels. So I've got this clicked. This confidence level, we talked about this in the previous video. Excel will always give you a 95% confidence interval. If you want, in addition to the 95, you want something else, you would click this and input whatever it is that you want here. I'll leave that blank. Uh, output range, where do we want the output? Let's put it over here. And again, let's get those standardized residuals because why not? Excel's doing all the work. Doesn't, uh, doesn't cost us anything. Okay, and so there I've got now my multiple regression with two independent variables, okay? So we would interpret this, we would read this output the same way that we did for the simple linear regression. I have, let's clean this up a little bit first here. All of this and this. Get that down to two decimals, make it look a little bit more pretty. Okay, so you've got your R squared, your coefficient of determination. Uh, you probably talked about in class how for a multiple regression, this can easily be influenced. This can be inflated by adding uh, additional independent variables. So for a multiple regression, generally the adjusted R squared is the preferred. So that's my adjusted R squared here. Multiple R, again, that's our coefficient of correlation between our dependent and independent variables. Here I've got the ANOVA. So if you're doing a um, multiple regression, now of course you know that the F test is distinctly different from the T test. Remember when we talked about the simple linear regression, as we have an example of it over here, the ANOVA for the F test is entirely redundant because we know that the F test there is identical to the T test on the slope. And so once again, here we can see those P values are exactly the same to every decimal place. Excel calls this significant F. This is my P value. Over here, as soon as we have more than one independent variable, that no longer it holds anymore. Now the F test is different. The F test is that test for overall significance of the model. Again, this is my P value. And the T tests, those are tests on individual parameter significance, okay? Again, I'm not getting into a lot of depth on that discussion that's covered in my other videos. Here, we're just looking at getting the results, okay? So for my students, if you're doing a, an, an assignment, I would generally want this portion to also be included as that F test for the simple linear regression. 
I don't care about the ANOVA because it's redundant, but now for a multiple regression, it is unique. It does provide more information. So I would want to see that complete ANOVA as part of that final report for that test on the significance of the model. Then here I have all of my output for the estimated regression equation. Here you can see because I left that confidence level portion blank, if I come back in here, remember here I did not click this, I did not ask for a different interval. So what Excel has done is it's giving me two 95% intervals. Kind of silly, I know. I don't need two of those. Let's just get rid of one of them. And so this is that estimated regression output that certainly I would want to see as part of that final report. And you know, when you're asked to provide your results from your estimated regression um, equation, that is it. There's my intercept, 147.54. Uh, There's my slope on X2. There's my slope on X1. So my estimated regression equation, 147.54 minus 4.1x2 plus 7.04x1. Okay, I'll write that down just so that we can see what we're doing here. So my estimated equation, oops, let me scroll down. Y hat, this was 147. Point fifty four pull minus four point one x two. It doesn't matter the order of x one, x two, the way I've put in the data. I guess Excel has kind of switched them around. It doesn't make a difference at all. Uh, and plus seven point zero four x1. Okay, so there's my final estimated regression equation for this model that contains two independent variables. Okay, so again, when I talk about this in class, we talk about under using regression analysis to understand the nature of the relationship between our variables. So there's the point estimate of the marginal effect. There's whether or not those are significant, significantly different from zero. And there's the confidence interval for that marginal effect, that incremental change in the independent variable and the effect that it has on the dependent variable. The second important use for regression analysis is for the purpose of prediction. And so I like to say, okay, you know, you can do this by hand. You can use a calculator if you want, but um, I like to have something in my Excel sheet that makes it easier to do it more than once so that I can just easily change things. So here for my predicted value, here I'm going to enter in my estimated regression equation. I'm going to say, okay, this is equal to, there's my intercept plus, this is maybe don't be confused by this. I'm going to say plus this cell is minus, so it's going to be a negative, right? The plus and the minus gives me the minus plus. Oh, so that's going to be minus 4.1 times. This is X2. So I'm going to reference this cell here, X2 plus this cell here. And that's on X1. So I'm going to reference this cell. That's AA. I have to type it in manually. AA5. Okay. So there's my estimated regression equation, just referencing my results. I always prefer cell references because it avoids rounding error. If you just type it into one or two decimal places, as soon as you multiply it by some constant, you've magnified your rounding error by the amount of that constant that you're multiplying it by. So I always prefer cell references. It eliminates um, rounding error. So now I can put in some values. I can say, okay, what is the predicted value y hat if x1 is 45 and x2 is 71? Uh, I'm just making up numbers. I don't have any context here. And now it gives me a predicted value given those particular values of interest for x1 and x2. And because I've set this up in Excel, I can easily you know, throw in different values for these two and very quickly get uh, an updated predicted value. Okay. 
Um, finally, residual analysis, same, exactly the same as the simple linear regression. I select, there's my predicted values. That's what I want on my x-axis. I hold down on my iMac, I hold down the command key to select this second column. On a Windows PC, you're gonna hold the control key. And now I'm going to produce a scatter plot. Okay, now I can comment on any patterns that I see. Does it look like the assumptions are being met, et cetera, et cetera, okay? Now, we're not done yet. There's the simple linear, there's the multiple. You can see how similar they are. Now, what if your assignment also includes some categorical variables? So here I'm not gonna, again, I'm not gonna talk about what these are and, and how to interpret the coefficients and all of this stuff. That's all saved for other videos that we talk about the con context and the theory and application and this kind of stuff. Here in, in this video, how do I incorporate categorical variables into my Excel? No different, absolutely no different. I go to my data, data analysis. I'm using the same tool, the regression tool. Okay, I select that dependent variable. Well, it hasn't changed. I'm using that same data set, that same dependent variable. My independent variables now, in addition to x1 and x2, I'm just going to include my categoricals. Red, blue, and my base case here is purple. My reference case is purple, so those dummies are all zeros. I say, where do I want the output? Let's come down here. And I want standardized residuals, sure, everything's fine, done. You can see how simple that is. It's all exactly the same from the simple linear regression to the multiple regression. And whether we have only continuous variables in our multiple regression as we had here, or if we add categorical variables as we've done here, it changes nothing as far as how to obtain the results using Excel. So here I have again my intercept. Let's clean this up a little bit. I know sometimes it's tedious, but look how easy it is here. I just go home and I click, click, click. We're down to three or two decimals. And there we go. I've got my R squared, my adjusted R squared, my significance F. This is a P value on the F test, the test for overall model significance. Here I've got all of my coefficients. If I wanted to do some prediction again, I have now my x1, I have x2, I have my dummies red and blue. Oops. And in prediction, here's where I enter my estimated regression equation. 119 plus, now here I'm gonna look at x1, so here's x1 here times whatever value I put in for x1. I'm gonna to have to enter this manually because it doesn't want me to click, whoops. Undo that nonsense. This is AI, that's AI cell four, plus now x2, so here's x2, times this cell out here plus, now I'm looking at red, here's red, times this cell here, plus, now I'm looking at blue, here's blue, times this cell here. Done. Now I can put in values of interest for my dependent, uh, sorry, my independent variables. Let's, I'm just making up numbers, I don't know, here's 13, here's 58. Remember, categoricals can only be values of zero or one. So if I'm interested in the predicted value for purple, which is my base case, as we can see here, those are both uh, zeros. Well, that's it, right? Because these are both zeros. So there's my predicted value that corresponds to category purple, whatever that is, and x1, x2. If I wanna look at red, okay, I put a one in here. If I wanna look at blue, this has to be zero and one. And I can now easily run through a 
series of different uh, values from my categoricals. Residual analysis, same as before, holding down control here, I get my two columns, insert my scatter plot, and there we go. Now I can copy and paste this into my report, into my Word document, provide a, a residual analysis about the assumptions that are being met or not being met, whatever you see in that scatter plot. Okay, so that's it for regression analysis. We did a whole other video just on simple linear regression, but here I've gone through it very briefly so that here you can see how similar it is to go from that simple linear regression with one independent variable to a multiple regression with two or more independent variables. And once again, how simple it is and straightforward it is to move from a, a, a simple linear to a multiple with continuous variables. Here we have a multiple with continuous variables and categorical variables. Okay, so that's it. That's all I have on my to-do list for this entire series of videos. So hopefully this has been helpful. Hopefully these videos have been helpful in getting you through the Excel component of your assignments or the problems that you're working on while you're studying. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.